In this video, I want to talk about how small preflop mistakes can easily turn into much larger postflop mistakes. And I know that I briefly talked about this earlier in the course, but now that we are in the preflop section of the course, I want to make sure that I dedicated an entire lecture to this and that I went through an example scenario showing you exactly what I'm talking about. So when I talk about a small preflop mistake, it's pretty much when you are calling, raising, or limping too wide of a range, too weak of a hand that you shouldn't be playing. And it could be anybody. It could be a good player that's playing too wide of a range, or it could be a bad player. But when we talk about people that often do this, it's typically going to be beginning and struggling poker players. And these are players that really just don't understand the importance of proper preflop play. And they don't realize that a simple small mistake can easily lead to a much larger post-flop mistake. And specifically, when we're looking at specific players, and these are the players that we want to play against, these are typically going to be the loose passive recreational players at the micro stakes. So let's talk a bit about them. So the loose passive poker player. So this is the type of player and then we've already covered this before in the course, so I'm just going to briefly talk about this. But this is the type of player that will often limp or flat call a preflop raise much more than they should. So they are playing a very wide range of hands. And the rationale is, well, you know what? It's only a few chips to see the flop. I can open limp, I can over limp, or I can just simply call my opponent's raise. And then if I don't make anything on the flop, I can just fold. Very simple rationale. So in their mind, by limping, whether it's open limping or over limping, and in regards to calling a raise, whether the first one to call a raise, or if they say, well, you know what, two other players or three other players have called that raise, I'm going to go ahead and call two. They see it in their mind as a cheap way to see the flop. And here's the issue with that, is that they think that they can see a flop for cheap, and their thing is, is that they're getting a good price to try to hit a monster hand on the flop and to take down a big hand. But unfortunately, there's a fallacy in their thinking here because in regards to only flopping a pair, you're only going to flop a pair roughly one third of the time. And when we're talking about flopping better hands, the odds of you flopping better hands just goes down drastically even more. And we'll actually take a look at some of these common odds on the flop in regards to determining how often you're going to flop these type of hands, whether a made hand or a draw in the next lecture. But just understand that if you're only going to flop a strong hand, at most, if it's only one pair, that's only going to be one third of the time. And so how often are you going to flop something that's better than that? Well, not that often. And so that's the biggest issue with their thinking is that they're not going to flop a decent hand that often. They're either going to flop a draw or they're just going to flop nothing at all. Now let's talk about this. Let's actually talk about it from the perspective of them actually flopping a hand. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this example scenario. So with this example scenario, we'll start with a preflop and we'll go down and we'll talk about the hand and then we'll do our analysis. So a loose passive player, open limps, king nine suited under the gun first to act, and then a solid tight aggressive opponent in middle position next to act raises to four big blinds. Everybody else folds under the gun, decides to call, and they go to the flop heads up. The flop is king seven deuce and it's a rainbow and the pot size is 9.5 big blinds. The under the gun limper, that person checks. Middle position who raised preflop puts out a continuation bet of seven big blinds into this 9.5 big blind pot. So they fire out a continuation bet, decent sizing. Under the gun check calls, so they make the call here and then we go to the turn. Now look at the pot size, it's now up to 23.5 big blinds. So the turn is the queen of clubs, under the gun checks again with top pair with a nine kicker, and middle position fires out a second continuation bet of 17 big blinds, under the gun calls again. On the river, the pot is now 
big blinds and ignore that extra 0.5 there. It's a typo. The turn is a three clubs. A relative blank doesn't really change anything. Under the gun checks again. Middle position fires out a third continuation bet of 40 big blinds. And under the gun calls. And middle position turns over king, queen of spades. Under the gun mucks their hand. And they lose 68 big blinds in the process. So this is a classical example of a player overplaying a hand and overvaluing top pair with a weak kicker. So if we take a look at this over here, is that the first mistake is that the player should not be open limping at all. And they shouldn't be playing king nine suited from under the gun because it's way too weak. The kicker is not strong enough. And if we look at this pre-flop, they limp in and their assumption is, well, you know, I'll see a flop for only one big blind. They get ISO raised and now it's only three more big blinds. So they think, okay, well, it's only three more big blinds. I can flop a strong hand. I can flop a pair of kings. I'll go ahead and call. And what you're going to notice here is in terms of the sizes of the bets, and I try to make these realistic in terms of what a good player would size for a value bet. And we'll actually, we'll talk about that in the post-flop section. But you'll notice that well, they initially, they put one big blind in, they get raised, so then that triples to three big blinds. Now they put four big blinds in pre-flop. It almost doubles on the flop. And then again, by the time that we get to turn, it goes from four big blinds, putting four big blinds in pre-flop to 17 big blinds on the turn. And then by the time they get to the river, it's 40 big blinds. And so what this shows us is that the river bet size that they have to call is 10 times larger than the pre-flop raise that they end up calling, the amount of money that they put in pre-flop. And in terms of the total amount lost, it's a big amount in regards to their entire stack. 68 big blinds, that's a lot to lose in this situation. And this is something that you're gonna see time and time again with loose passive types of players. Now, this is just a simple example. I don't want you to understand all the strategy in regards to what middle position is doing here, pre-flop and post-flop. But what I do want you to hone in and what, uh, what I want you to take away from this is that when we have players like this that are overvaluing a top pair hand with a terrible kick of card, which is a hand they shouldn't be playing under the gun at all in any sort of a situation for the most part, that they're going to get into situations like this and one mistake here leads into a larger mistake on the flop, an even larger mistake on the turn, and an even larger mistake on the river just by simply overvaluing top pair kings. And like I said early in the course, this is a level one type of opponent. They look at their hand, they look at the board texture, they say, I have top pair, I got a call. Same thing as if this was ace nine, you know, I have top pair of aces, I got a call. So anyways, that's going to conclude our lecture discussing how small pre-flop mistakes can easily lead to large post-flop mistakes. And I want to make sure that you understand this because as we get into the different strategy, we're talking about raising first in as a pre-flop raise. We're talking about isolation raising. We're talking about three betting. We're talking about uh, cold calling or over calling and potentially uh, over limping in certain situations that you understand the risk of doing certain things with weaker ranges of hands and how one small minute air preflop can potentially lead to a huge loss of chips by the time that you get to the river. So if you have any questions, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.